started. We uh, got the recording going. I'm a smart boy. I know what I'm doing. Um, hi, hello, welcome to Semilac Represents Wrath and Glory, the tabletop RPG, the game Imperial Truth. I am your GM, Matthew. And here are my three lovely players. Uh, one of them, unfortunately, could not make it. He had other obligations. So he will be sharkless this evening. But he is represented by the old street shark down there in the corner. <laughs> but say hello, everyone. Howdy. Hi. Hola. Howdy. Yeah. So now that we got everything started, um, let me get this up here because I don't need that. Uh, that can... Stop. Okay. Just doing some housekeeping things. Make sure everything's copacetic. All right. All right. So when we left, left our, um, you know, agents of the In Inquisitor's Sable, some things have happened. They split off. Um... They are in the Hive City of Clemency, where they have been sent here for two distinct duties. One is more public than the other. The first one, some Inquisitors, uh, administrators know that they are here to help sort of suss out why there's an uptick in violence and rioting and other disturbances within uh, the Hive, and obviously to assist in dealing with it. The second one is to find out the validity of a local saint called Father Faithful. Father Faithful is a very mysterious figure to the ecclesiarchy off of uh, Clemency, and even the, the ecclesiarchy on Clemency probably don't know too much direct, in, direct factual information about him. But they haven't got that far. Uh, since they've been here, they've been attacked by gangers, they've been attacked by servitors, they've been attacked by more gangers... <laughs> and then last episode, they decided to split off um, the in more imperial-minded uh, sister of battle, Juliet, and the uh, 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 Maccabian Genisar uh, aide went off to talk to Hellreich um, and more of the officials. And then eventually they ended up um, talking to a, a, a one sole S, uh, exit. Uh, a a the scion of the exit ho noble house within the clemency hive they had basically dinner with him uh him and his two sisters um and they got some information out of that and then uh the the duo of the scum and villainy um got together and they went on their own direction and they went to what scum and villains do best go to a bar so they figured out where this bruiser that almost killed them likes to hang out, and they started talking to people. However, this, this scum and this villainy, a.k.a. our good ganger um, uh, Jackta and the shark boy uh, Bruce, aren't exactly the most social people in the universe. Um, and so they ended up blowing the place to hell, literally. Like with a grenade, it was. I was there. It was amazing. They may want to lay low for a while, um, and so that's kind of where we left it because they had just finished up dealing with the uh, dealing with the bar. They had this vamoosed after throwing money at the bartender to not you know pursue them with pitchforks and shotguns. So this is where we stand, <coughs> and you guys just had gotten done with the dinner and had been shown out. So, um, you guys are still together. It is still that day and time. Um, I haven't really set a calendar per se. Um, I probably should. Um, but are there any questions, comments, concerns before we get rolling on all of this? No. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Mac, uh, Max, say something. Test. Okay. Casper, say something. Hello. Okay, just making sure because no one was talking at all, and I was just like, <laughs> "All right, cool." Um, so everyone's good. Everyone's got their on roll twenty. Everyone's got their campaign card. Everyone's got two wrath this time. Yeah. So we're we're good to go. Um, uh, there's no glory on the table right now. Um, and all right, we'll we'll take it with uh, I'll let uh, we'll start with uh, 
uh, we'll start with uh, Jacked Up because I want them to sort of figure out what they are doing, what they want to do. So the bar, you just got kicked out of the bar or you just left the bar. Um, what do you want to do? We bribed the bar. You, Yes, just so they wouldn't immediately start hunting you down. <laughs> um, so first of all, how long has it been since we split up? Because I know we had... Like we left, we had two days yes, left before the rendezvous. It's been about uh, better part of a day since you split up, since you last saw each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got a roughly a day, uh, day and some change before you're supposed to meet the other uh, scavy, the other mutant that you quote unquote liberated. Um, so you and how long is it going to take to reach that location that we were supposed to rendezvous uh, from where you are currently? Mm-hmm. All right, now that's going to be a roll there, big man. Uh, it's going to be a cunning. Mm, let me think. Let me, look, let me look real quick. Andy dandy rule book and all that jazz. I would say, hmm. Uh, actually, it'd be more of a yeah. I'll give you a cunning or um survival. I'll do a cunning. Okay. Uh, any. Any any bonuses that I should know about for this? No. Luckily, you. Uh, well, we got a uh, one, two, three, four icons. You got four icons. All right, good job. Yeah. Um. It, the difficulty was three, so you can't move anything over. Um. Yeah. You are pretty sure you you can get there in about half a day from your current location. If you went back to basically where your quote unquote apartment was. Um, um, that would be another, that would add tag another half a day onto it. So it would be a day just to get, it would be half a day to get there. Then it would take you almost a whole day to get all the way back. So you'd be cutting it close if you want to sort of directly rendezvous with them, unless you figure out some middle point, you figure out some way to communicate. Um, I will say you all do have a Vox and like coded Voxes to each other. However, those only have a couple kilometer range. Like, they're very short range. They're not Vox casters. Unless you figure something funny out to do with your Vox caster and or get other equipment, um, you're not going to be able to communicate directly to them. So, I'm going to say Jocta would head towards the rendezvous point just because uh, he wants to check out the area before it's time to actually meet this guy. Uh, Yeah. Um... Sure. You head over there. That takes you, like I said, a bit of for half a day. So um, I'm going to have to hop over to um, uh, Aid and Juliet and, and figure out exactly what they're doing because they've got roughly half a day to a day to determine what they want to do. Um, I will say Bruce is with you. He is hanging out doing stuff, um, being his normal, like, jovial self, but that rubs everyone the wrong way because he's Shark Man. Um, but he's around. Um, but I will probably say when you drive, he'll be like, I'm going to scout out the area and do some other stuff. So he won't be directly. He will, he'll be in Vox range, but he will not be in visual, like doing stuff range. That's an official range, by the way. TM, visual doing stuff range. All right. Okay. Juliet and Aid. What are you guys doing? You have had a actually surprisingly nice and civil dinner. You found out some interesting information from uh, one of the sisters. Um, let me pull up dare notes. I should already have these notes up because I am a smart boy. Uh, um, I think I'd just walk around for now, looking for looking for our chromed up boy. Okay. Um, give me Uno Momento, small technical issue. I'm trying to I'll try to solve it. Uh, let's get that out. That will probably help. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it on my other computer real quick. Give me a second. I got unless the sister wants to do something else. Yeah, you guys talk amongst um, yourselves. I think I would like to go find our friends too. Very well. So will we walk to the rendezvous point, or will we just walk around looking? 
Uh, walking around will be a little tough just because <laughs> they are, while one of them is pretty damn obvious, um, you are literally in a city that houses billions and billions of, upon billions of people. So probably okay. not the easiest thing in the world. Okay, uh, I think we should. Yeah, there is um, Sol Exet, the family, there's Lucinda, um, and what was the name of the other sister? Waifu? <laughs> it's not waifu. Oh, it's I, waifu. waifu. Well, Waithra. 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 Yeah, it's Waithra Exet. Um, and he seems to be the middle, uh, he seems to be roughly the middle child. So obviously there's a more patriarchal or some other criteria that is met that makes him the head of the house over the, over um, Waithra, who's the oldest of them. So you guys are heading. Sorry, I was doing stuff, so I didn't hear you. Uh, let's head to the rendezvous. Okay, you always want to head to the rendezvous point. Um, uh -huh. roll, roll either cunning or um, survival. One of you can help the other, which is they'll give you an extra die. Or they'll roll, and then their successes will add dice to you. So whoever, figure out who wants to help who. And you both have to roll the same thing. You said cunning or survival? Yeah, cunning or survival. I'll help you. I have three. How much do you have? I have four. Uh, maybe I'll help you. Very well, then. And are you going to roll cunning or survival? We'll do survival. Okay. Hot damn, hot damn. Uh, so, that is really good. Uh, so you helped Juliet? She has three right. icons. Technically four, actually. So, I have one, two, three, four, five, six icons. Yeah, But you were helping her? She's helping me. I was okay. helping him. Right. So you need to roll... You get to roll um, two more dice because she can push one difficulties one, which she got, and then she can move the six over, which gives you an additional die. So you get two additional. Just go ahead and roll two additional d sixes. And you got a and because you rolled a six on the, that means you got you. I'm gonna just say you got a glory automatically in the pot. Cool. So that's in total eight, I think. Yes. Wicked. Yeah, you guys did very well. Like, um, I actually found out you're not very far from the rendezvous point. You're within an hour away. So, like, you immediately start, because of the some of the copies of the maps you probably have on you, um, you immediately are able to find this place um, and get a good surveying of the location. So, you're well, I, technically, you're well ahead of Jekta, even though you know, know Jekta is on the, his way here. So cool. Let me put... We did it. We didn't get ourselves killed. Yet. So you have one glory on the uh, on the pot in the pool right now. <clears throat> so what you do since you guys get there early and Jackta, you'll see this as well. Um this place is a just on the very edge uh between the hive proper, the main hive and the under hive. So Getting this, this is a more well worn area, but it is not well kept up. There's a lot of rust, there's a lot of detritus and debris around. It smells, the purification here is a little rougher. Um, it's definitely not designed to be, it's habitable. You could live here, but it's definitely of the for the low lowest of classes of people that would consider themselves any sort of respectable acceptable member of the Imperium of Man. Anything if you live below in the Underhive, you're 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 starting to look you're getting in the gang true ganger criminal mutant territory. Things you don't particularly want to see on a day to day basis. Um, which means it may be a contested zone or this is a neutral zone. You don't know from a sort of a ganger perspective. Um, Looks like home. Yeah, kind of. Actually it's a little nice for home. Um <laughs> 
Um, Bruce would also agree. But from the Imperial side of things, you realize you definitely with your successes, you get here, you see there's a couple people coming and going, but where you are rendezvousing, because he told you, so there's a long stretch of, um, there's a long, large tunnel, branching tunnel that has sort of one middle open sort of um, sky vent that goes up into a great cha- uh, chasm uh, above you in the hive. So if you look through this one like large hole, you'll see like not a skylight, but you'll see the twinkling of like lights in the far distance of the upper, upper echelons of the hive. And he said he wants you to meet you in that area. Um, there's uh, and very much somewhere to like, any crowded, like, think of any sort of really crowded, like, Asian market or anything. Um, the walls are not just walls. They are ensconced either hab blocks or stores and other small shops. So all the space is utilized down here, like, where you guys are going to be. So it's, it's easy to get in and out of. It's uh, relatively public, but for right for what you are right near, there's not a lot of people come through this area. Um, and you know that there is, and I'll go ahead just for a second, there's a tram area, public tram area, really close to here, and a couple of elevators. So you could definitely come and go out of this area with relative ease. Um, other than that, what are you guys doing? Um, you two are definitely given wide berth. If anyone comes near you guys, they go the other way or they go around you. They give you the right of way. Just because you have a full sister in battle armor, you have another dude who looks like he is in full carapace armor, which makes him everyone think he's a suppressor, but he doesn't look like a native suppressor. He doesn't have the right coloring or the pat- right patches um, and the full silver <laughs> ma- uh, face mask, which they don't even know what that is. So they're just like, nope, and walking away. Do um, we smell bad? Uh, <laughs> you do. <laughs> As my, life, my face rosy. would just turn to yours for a moment and then turn back forward and continue looking forward <laughs> yeah Juliet technically smells better than all you I smell of incense and, and burnt offerings you guys are just grungy grungy <laughs> duly noted so what do you guys want to do while you want to now how long are you going to wait that's the kicker. You don't know he's on his way. So you don't know it when to show up. And so you guys could be waiting a long time and you're assuming he's on his way. So you got to be- like a good guardsman. I would definitely stand there for however long it takes. True. Fair. Like I you think said, you gotta- we should wait for like half a day. Okay. Um, you, well, Juliet, you know you're running, you're you're burning uh, power right now. Oh yeah. Because you're even, even uh. in sort of a stationary mode. Um, and when you're not using a lot, sure that conserves a little bit of energy, but that the power supply in your power armor is not infinite. You don't, like I said, you don't have a full of sturdies. Um, how long supply. do I have? You got about a left. day and a half left. Okay. So you got a little bit of wiggle room, but not not a whole hell of a lot. It's not a. It wasn't on the full charge when you got it done. Full charge will give you about four or five days um, without full operational status. And that's five hard days of like active use, like just continually using it. Um. Um. You guys. So you guys are chilling there, not doing much unless you specifically want to do something. Let me know. Just looking around, and he would definitely stay vigilant too. Okay. Um, oh. Eating snacks, <laughs> snacks. You just like point at one dude. You're like, I want that, and he's like, <laughs> and he just hands it to you. <laughs> Even though you're a very nice lady, you are a very big lady in very frightening armor. And you have a faceless man behind you. So, um, so Jacta, um, within a couple of hours, uh, being the most tech savvy of the group, 
Uh, you know a little thing about the, your voxes that they probably don't know about their voxes is when you all, uh, when at least two of the these um, voxes are within range of each other, they have a little indicator light that go ding um, that tells, hey, one uh, one of your synced up fellow synced up voxes are within receiving and tra- transmission range. So you know that one of them are within like two kilometers of you right now in some direction. Okay, so it just basically gives an indicator that they're within range of one another? Yep. You, it doesn't tell you direction, it doesn't tell you anything like that. It just says, ding, I, hey, I can transmit to X thing. Okay. So, uh, and you said these are secure boxes? Yep, pretty secure. I mean, someone of... Like, they're linked to each other. It's not like it's an open frequency that just like anybody can... Okay. It, it's... it's, it's there's an encrypted frequency between them, so only, ideally, only them would be picking up. You'd have to know what frequency, and then you'd have to decrypt the actual. Um, uh, I wanted to say decrypt the encryption, but that sounds pedantic. Um, yeah, decrypt the actual um, messages based on the okay. message it's using. So as uh, as he gets within range and and notices this, he just sort of flicks the switch. And he's like, well, look who decided to show up early. In fact, you are late. Ah, taking in the sights and the sounds and the people. And then shortly, and shortly, as that change is going, your Jack is coming down from an elevator into the area. Oh, I apologize. I'm an idiot. I gotta retcon something. Um, you did use the Vox to communicate, and that's fine. But it would have always indicated because Bruce is near you, and Bruce has one. So, wow, well, fair. <laughs> well, I actually, I'll, I'll retcon this uh, even more ah, because I'm the GM and I can do these things. And it's one indicator light for one for each of you. It doesn't, oh, no. and, and so, but it doesn't tell you wh- you've learned you've learned which ones whose, but no one else has. Okay. Uh, Aid, if you were speaking, I couldn't hear you. I saw you talking. Or like right now? Yeah, I can hear you now. No, I wasn't talking. I was just muttering to myself like a crazy man. Sorry to ignore. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> He's got to talk to the emperor somehow. He's that's the only way he can find his equal. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, continue, continue as you as Jacta and Bruce are lowering down. So from did this guy give us a specific building to meet him at, or was it just? Uh, meet me in this area. Yeah, meet me in this open area. This this one dis- very distinct um, uh, skylight, essentially. Um, so, okay. Um, basically, just the open air above you. It's not very big. Think of like a like a mall plaza. Okay. Like, just that it's large, and you could see, and there's a little like kiosk and thing. Um, it's pu- public, um, but it's not. It's not like a football field, football stadium where it's just oh, hugely open. It's actually mm-hmm. relatively small, um, comparatively. But it's he said I will meet you at this area at this time, which is roughly a day from now. Okay. Uh, so, can I get a feel for? So you said it's like roughly the size of like a mall plaza. Yep. I'm assuming tab blocks. Line out, you know, line there. Like I said, they have many tunnels. From this one central plaza area, you have several tunnels and gangways that go to various other parts of this large superstructure that is the high proper. Oh, so it's more like a platform in the middle of, like... Not a platform. Think of more like a, t- like, under- underground. Mm-hmm. You have this big open area. And then there's tunnels that, that spiral out of it. Okay. Uh, if I always, I this is my imagining how I, I think I try to think of hives. Think of them as dwarves in a mountain, like a dwarven empire in a mountain. Everything okay. is burrowed out and hollow. Is there anything that overlooks this plaza? Mm, no, no. You'd have to go okay. super out of your way, and you would barely be able to see in, um, just because of the size and distance you would be at. How many exits are in this plaza? Uh, half a dozen. Lots. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you said I'm coming down from an elevator. I'm assuming I have to go down one of these tunnels to get into the plaza. Yeah, yeah. You come stop, and then you come down a couple areas, then come down some stairs, and bada bing, bada boom, you're there. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, he'll uh, noting, taking note of this. Um, do I see these two? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty obvious. They're not hiding, so. Okay. He's, uh, he'll, he'll walk out into the, the center of the plaza. Is there, in, like, a central structure, like, I don't know, like a fountain or something that they have? Or is it literally just yeah, a completely like a pillar, open area? Like a couple pillars. Um, okay. Not really a fountain. That'd be a waste of water. You could, there's no reason <laughs> to have anything like that. Yeah, statue, fountain, something in the middle that, you know, denotes the, the, the fanciness of said plaza. Um, this is not fancy. This is very utilitarian. Um, he'll uh, he'll walk to the center of it though, looking looking for these two. Yep, you see him, and you all see Jacta. And Bruce has already sort of convened off, like he's going to go stop the area, make sure everything's all good. Okay. Um, since we have still like a day left to wait, maybe we should find somewhere to stay, like a inn or a pub or something. What, you don't want to sleep out here? <laughs> In the plaza. <laughs> and sleep standing. <laughs> okay. There's some logistics. There's some logistical problem with it. You're definitely not space marines from where I remember. Uh, just out of curiosity, are there like the stereotypical like guys with burning barrels? No, no. Set this up isn't, anywhere? This isn't like Hobo Land? Uh, you got to kind of go down a couple levels for Hobo Land. I don't know. Uh, this is actually well, not well policed, but definitely, definitely kept um, um, undisturbed by a lot of that stuff. Um, okay. So I guess if you would just start too much of a ruckus or something, the suppressors would come through and sort of clear out the area. Um, like I said, from your perspective, this is either this is probably neutral territory. Like no gang controls the area for one reason uh -huh. or another. Um, is there any surveillance equipment in here? Mm, roll like pick recorders, roll things like that. Set up. Roll awareness. What did you say? Roll awareness for me. Oh, awareness. Mm -hmm. Uh well that's uh that's just a complete uh, one one icon one um there's probably something um you just can't yeah you just can't parse it out okay it's covered by debris or dust or things look like other things or I mean you do find some things that were may have been and they were busted but you're pretty sure those have been replaced or some at some point. So yeah, what are you guys doing? Uh, on our way, or I should say on his way here, did he notice any... Like, I guess, what is this level? Is this primarily like a residential mm. block? This is more of a shopping area. This is more of a shopping um, business-owned area. Okay. This is more of a market than it is a hab block. There may be some hab blocks very close by that are, okay. are requisitioned. Um, there are places that could be used to stay in, um, but you you definitely have to go a little ways to find something you could quote unquote rent or 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 purchase or find some sort of like flop house essentially. If you went down a couple a level or two, you probably could find some random piece of corner that you guys could hold up in, um, but you'd have to go searching for that. It all depends on what you guys want to do. Well, I don't think you're going to find any of that place, any, any things like that uh, up here, miss. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll just sit here and wait and pray. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, we're going you can to always take sanctuary in a chapel. I'm sure, there is one nearby. Is there a chapel nearby? Uh, I have to go far. You haven't been actively looking for one, so you don't know. You'd have to go looking. <laughs> but 
to be fair, the I'm sure there's some ecclesiarchical presence somewhere around, but if if it's <laughs> enough to hold something you got for you guys, you don't know. That's something you'd have to go digging. Basically, what I'm saying is, any direction you want to go in will take a little bit of time and digging to go do. I think it's better to just wait. Hold on, Max having issues. <laughs> no, I was just taking something away from my dog. Okay. Don't need that. <sighs> Pretty much. Um, um, waiting might get us an unwanted attention. Yeah, yeah, let's go camping. Okay, so you guys are going to go to the lower part of the hive? Is that what I'm, not, what I'm interpreting? Sorry. I know, I meant camping here. Oh, just going to case to hang out here? Okay, sure. You guys can totally do that. Um, so, you guys can camp out for the day. Um, so, the issue is staying awake. Um, I mean, yes, you could hobo it and just kind of sit off to the side and try to sleep. Um, Julietta could actually sort of weirdly, like, crane her neck and sleep in her armor because her armor will actually keep her upright. Um, but there are also, like, biological functions that you all have to deal with. So, in general, what I would like, if you guys are honestly going to stay here for the day, I'm going to need a, uh, I think it's toughness test from you guys, each of you. <laughs> okay. Um, also, while we're resting, can I attempt to uh, work on this data pad some more? Uh, let me try to remember. It was broken, busted. It was broken. Um, I've got a combi tool, so I've got tools at least. Uh, yeah, I'll let you. I will. I'm just gonna let you know it's gonna be pretty difficult. Um, okay. you're not in an ideal situation, and you're and you're you. Yeah, you, you have to ha ad hoc something. So, well, Jocta is wired yeah. with his uh three, four, five, six, seven successes with a critical. Oh wow! Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, and let me do that. Eight is, eight is actually doing, not doing that great. He's I'm going to re-roll that. Okay. <laughs> Julia is like ready to take a nap. Uh, actually, Juliet's doing pretty good. She's got, really? um, yeah, you got two, you got three total icons. Uh, Uh, that is three, four, five icons. Mm. Do I want to re-roll? Yeah, eight is not doing too well. Um. <laughs> well, so let me ask: Is five enough? Uh, barely. But it's not. Okay. But it. But when I mean barely, I mean like you have made progress to the point that you basically stripped it of its broken bits. And you know uh -huh. exactly the parts that you need to, and this takes a couple hours of work. Like you find like a little bench and sort of like strip it down, clean it out and pull it apart. And then you're like, okay, I know exactly the bits. If I can find another data pad, I can strip that one of its bits, put these bits, and then it'll be fully functional operational again. The issue is find another data pad of roughly same maker's mark. Um, mm -hmm. I won't say model because that'd be too uh, too modern of a term. Um, because these, oh, well. so once you find it, and maybe you'd have to add. And if you so wasn't, basically, I know what's broken. I just don't have the components to fix it. Right. Correct. Okay. But if you could get those components, you could probably slap it together without a problem. Okay. Um, um, as for so Jack, you're just working away, and this is one of those things you're just like. It it's it's one of your true joys in life, like working on technology, working with your hands, getting into the guts of a machine, understanding the machine spirit in the the body of the machine, and understanding how the 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 uh, what's it called the STCs standard template constructs, sort of how the STCs kind of like pat pattern these things out, and also like how the Adeptus, uh, the Mechanicus, sort of, like, bless. Because when you open this thing up, you actually see, like, 
little prayers and engravings and very, very minor um, etches to and, and sort of offerings to the Omni Messiah to make the connections work. Um, and this really, like, fills you with a lot of just focus and and sort of catharsis so you feel good you you feel fine you you drink some you drink some recaf you get some ch chips in you you eat some you eat some food you're good you're fine Juliet, you're okay you nod off occasionally in your armor but that's because you have the luxury of doing so um while like jack is just busy doing his thing over there and there's even occasionally, like, you just power down the whole suit from internally, and you just kind of, you're like, well, it'll probably be okay um, if I just power it down, and that way it won't use power while I'm still kind of locked into it. She's cheating. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, but, A, do you, you definitely fall, like, there's a couple points where you, you nod off, you wake up, and you are either told or explained that you, it's been a couple hours, like, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, just the fatigue of the fight and dealing with this nobility and stress. Like you're dealing with stress you're not used to. Like this political stress, emotional stress, is a little different than um, uh, than than your war. Yeah. Then war, war is easy. This isn't. Yeah. And Does this you qualify as a rest? By the way. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, so we get our shock back, right? Yeah, you get all your shock back, um, and I have to look. There's regroup. I think it's called a regroup and a respite. Well, a respite, I think, is the only you get your shock back, and a regroup is you get everything back. Yeah, so regroup, regroup is like the eight hours or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, you guys get a regroup, a total regroup. <clears throat> okay. Um, like I said, this is not a very super well traveled, um, though. Over the twenty, sort of, actually, the the the, the day is twenty eight hours. On this planet, that's what still throws you off. Also, I would also say you guys are still super jack like planet lagged because things have been like you haven't gotten a decent night's sleep. You're still within a week of the being here. You're not used to the 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 sort of the rhythms of the hive and the planet itself. So I'd definitely say. So you guys. Um, see the comings and goings of people. Nobody really interacts with you because nobody wants to because they see a silver chromed man hanging out in the corner. You see a giant woman in power armor and they see a obvious sort of chromed out ganger um, just chilling, working on something weird. So they're, they're happy enough to leave you alone. A suppressor does come by like after like some part of the day or evening Walks by, sees you, looks at you, but then walks on. And, but then comes back a couple hours later, stops and looks at you, tilts his head, is like, and then walks off again. Like, he doesn't want, he's obviously evaluating you guys, but he's not going to do anything. Um, <laughs> so, roughly 24 hour, 28 hours, well, whole day passes. Um, and you guys are kind of there. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, make an awareness check for me, guys. Uh, Aid, you are going to be at a plus one DN right now because you are tired. But you keep track of that, yes? Yes, yes. Perfect. I will keep just letting you, the player, know that this is a factor that I'm going to deal, be dealing with. Uh, four icons. Likewise, four icons. Yep. Are we doing a battle of bottles? Who can have the biggest bottle? <laughs> no. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I only got two. Yes, you only got two. So anyone who got basically um, three or higher, <laughs> that's a big bottle. I thought it was like, was that the world's biggest bong? What? Um, I thought there was something inside it, like a cylinder. I was like, what? Um, so, uh, anyone who got three or higher, and this actually includes aid because you actually beat that difficulty. Um, you actually see um, the scavy that you, and he's kind of peeking around a corner, looking around. He's obviously, he looks very much out of his element, like he's not supposed to be here. Or if he was to be found here, it would not be a good time for him. Um, and it is when it seems to be one of the quieter parts of this area. 
Um, there's not as much traffic. There's not a lot, a lot of commerce. There's always some money around, but they generally deal like, don't mess with you. You don't mess. Don't mess with me. I don't mess with you. Type of thing. And so, yeah, like I said, he's a very twisted looking individual. He's got a very large uh, right arm and left leg, and a very uh, shriveled uh, right arm and sh- more a smaller left leg. So he's very lopsided and very obvious. Uh, with his mutation, um, he's got some. He's got like a ratty cloak on. He can come in to look for you. He's looking around like he's looking for you. And the moment you see him, he sort of looks over and sees you guys. Like, oh, there you are. Um, and he sort of skirts over to you guys. And then he, no, actually, he doesn't come over. To you. He's like uh, with his with his little shriveled arm is like waving over towards you guys. Uh, Jacta will head over. I'll keep an eye out around okay. to see if it's like an ambush or okay. if we're going to get Yeah, sure. Yeah, Juliet would also like to hang back and let... Okay. So you guys kind of talking. sort of move over. <laughs> you 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 two hang back, but you guys move over towards um, the uh, scavy. Uh, man, does anyone remember his name? I should have written this down. Uh, hold on a second. Let me do have, see if I wrote this down. Uh, I do not remember. I should go back and listen to the... I wrote it down somewhere, but the problem is where. Mm, uh, uh, I did not, because I didn't think he was that important. <laughs> He's not that important. That I didn't interact with him too much, so... <clears throat> All right, um... Uh, until I figure out uh, until I figure out his real name, his name will be uh, not an R word. I should just pull up like a name generator. Didn't you just name him like Brian or something? No, I didn't. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> uh, his name is Jaren. Oh, J- I knew it was a J thing. Yeah, Jaren. Thank you, Jaren. Thank you. Appreciate it. <sighs> Juliet totally remembers his name. Um, yes. yes. So Jaren is there, and he's looking at uh, Jacta and Bruce. Uh, oh, by the way, over the twenty-four hours, Bruce has come and gone. Like he's checked in with you guys, and he's like, "I'm going to continue walking around." Um, and but he's gone at like hours of the time. This is one of those times where he's not around. Um, and he's uh, you, you talk to Jaren. It's like, hey, hey uh, so I found out some information. Do tell. Um, he's looking around like shit. Um, so this is all I got. Um, in one of the warehouses, uh, a couple levels to the north and to the towards the east side of the hive um, uh, uh, warehouse, eighty-two. No, seven K dash forty-eight. 7k-48 because Matthew made that off the top of his head um, there is an exchange you wanted to know about the uh, midnight right 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 I mean Bruce wanted to know about it yeah what'd you want to know like I know a lot of things um hmm? uh, let's see we wanted to know about the midnight I'm talking speaking out of character right now yeah we that's fine, fine. About the midnight, um, because it was a new drug that had just been recently introduced, um, and if I remember correctly, it was somehow involved with the the uprising that's been going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As far as like the distribution and yeah, and it has something. It, 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 it may have some tie. Do it. What tie that is? You're not mm-hmm. sure. Um, Bruce. Bruce. <clears throat> May have been under some form of it or another drug, and but he's never. You guys haven't talked to him a lot about it, so uh-huh. you don't know. And he hasn't divulged that information, so you're not exactly hugely yeah. understanding about what that drug is or what it does. But we wanted to know basically who was distributing it, who was making it, etc. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, trying to think what else in about a day. Um, about. Yeah, and he, he sort of pulls something out of his, like, gratty, like, a little piece of, like, thrown away piece of paper that he's, like, 
chicken scratched onto, and he's looking at it, and he's like, uh, and he hands it, hands it to you, Jacta. Um, it has the name of the uh, warehouse on it, um, and then it has the time, which is roughly 20, a little less than a day, like 27 hours from now. There, uh-huh. he's like, so there is a group of guys, I don't know who they are, um, from above, who are going to be purchasing a whole bunch of stuff from the, uh, Matthew needs to look at his notes, because I know I... Mm-hmm. Uh, from the Black Fangs. They're going to be there acquiring. Uh, they're going to be selling it. it. Looks like that's who's. I don't know if they're making it and they're they're just getting it from someone else and they just redistribute it. But I know they're they're handing it off. So security will probably be pretty tight. Um, but if you want to know more about that stuff and who's involved, there you go. So I who indeed. are the Black Fangs? Um, didn't you? What are you these look? the same? Got a character? Are these the same guys that Rock was a part of? Um, didn't hold on. One they didn't. I didn't get yes. a name. They yes. didn't tell me a name. Yes. Um. Well, you don't know because you only know the symbol. You don't know the name. That was the kicker sure. between the information, and you yeah, guys yeah. haven't talked. You yeah, literally yeah. haven't talked. <laughs> yep. So he's like, well, that- I tried to get it, but I couldn't. Yeah. Like they didn't, they wouldn't want to give me the the information. So um, he, uh, like, as he asked this, um, what? Well, first of all, what does he say in response to it? Oh, he's like, uh, what would you ask him specifically? The like, who are the black fangs? Who are the who are the black fangs? Oh. Are these are they the uh, are they the, the the top dog around here? Uh, kind of, yeah. Um, um, they're really big into moving stuff around. Um, that's kind of well. I got in the met you guys to begin with, but I wasn't working directly for them. I was just seeing if I could pawn some stuff off to them. Uh-oh. He uh, he he crouches down and like in the grime on the floor, he draws the little symbol that Rock had. Yeah, He's like, I, I, uh, "Oh, yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, yeah, awesome." Um, and and you guys, when he makes the when when you you guys. Are close enough that you heard the you heard the term Black Fang, like you heard them talk about something something Black Fang, um, and then you see Jack to make that symbol in the grime on the ground, a symbol you haven't seen before. And if you remember what I described last time, it's a half circle with two lines coming down, sort of the middle of it on either like on parallel to each other. Um, Uh, what else you tell me about these guys? Um, uh, don't mess with them. Who's their leader? Uh, I don't know. That's, uh, I'm definitely not cool enough for that. I just know. All they do, all they do is I, train I just, the, I just know. All they do is train the drugs? Well, I mean, they do everything, but come on, man. Everyone's got, everyone's got a hand in something. Um, uh, I don't know everything they do. I'm not in their organization. Fuck, fuck, they won't give me the time of day. Um, how long they've been around? Ugh, uh, ever. So well, they aren't a new gang, okay? Uh, um, yeah, they're they they got they got connections everywhere, like everywhere, like everywhere. But uh, what they are, I don't know. I just know what I hear. And occasionally, I know a person who knows a person who knows a person who's heard a thing, and that's how I was able to get what I got. You said you uh, you know a lot of things, right? Well, depends on what. But yeah, yeah. He, uh, he sort of motions motions him a little bit closer. He sort of leans in. What do you know about Father Faithful? He looks at you like that was he like that was a weird turn, and he's like, uh, he's the saint, Father Faithful. He he's the guy. Uh, he he did some stuff for the hive. You ever met him? No, I don't even know if he's real. <laughs> well, how do you know he's a saint? Because everyone docks of him on all the hymnals and all the local. Uh, priests and everything. 
I get a I get a Michigan missionaries come down into Underhive all the time, spreading the good word. A lot of them just get eaten. Um, so what? This guy was uh, just some big big fancy priest, or was he uh, from down here? Shit, I do. do he looks at him and is like, do I look like wearing 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 robes? I don't know. You hang out in the police station a lot, apparently. Well, that's not the same thing as the damn church. Do you want to repent? She'll repent your sins for you. He points over right. at the sister. He's like, uh, okay, um, this is getting weird. Um, I got you the information. I appreciate you getting me out of that problematic spot. Uh, I have paid my due. If there's nothing else you guys need from me. Anything Anything else you guys want from Stumpy? He just like shake my head. Bruce would probably want drugs from him. <laughs> you actually say that in character, Juliet. Say that. <laughs> uh, what about Bruce? All right, one more question. How many? How what? what how, uh, what do you know about the security about this place? Uh, like, what what do they got? How many guys? At least probably half a dozen. I mean, it's not going to be. It's not a big meetup. It's not a big drop off. Um, I don't know how regular it is, but uh, the both sides are going to have guns. I mean, hell, it's a drug deal. What do you expect? What kind of guns? I don't know. Guns like those kind of guns, and he points to points to Juliet's bolter. <laughs> Shit, maybe. He just looks like he's never seen a gun like that in his life. So uh, that's some hardware. Yeah, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't make the plans. I just know that they're where they're meeting, roughly how many, and what's going on. That's it. Okay. You out of character? Anybody else? Nobody. Nothing. No. Thank you, Mr. Krabby Man. <laughs> he's not a crab. He's a, he's, he's just got a big arm. He's, 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 so he's very mischievous. He's got a big arm. Since Jack, I got punched like, in the face, go, I'd rather stay away. Get, get. He just sort of waves him off. He's like, yeah, fine, fine. He wanders back in, in one of the many exits and starts, loses himself in the. Uh, so yeah, you get some. You got a place, a time. Uh, a general layout, but it's about a it's a little so a day and a half from now. No, it's well, it's twenty seven hours, which means it's a little under a day. Oh, okay. Remember, twenty eight hours is the yeah. cycle of the day. Um, but to get there, you maybe maybe better part of a day. Um, and we need to sleep and recharge. Who needs to sleep and recharge? Even, you know, even you are getting a little fatigued <laughs> by this point. <laughs> Rolls will only take you so far, sir. <laughs> well, I don't think they got any luxury hotels down here, ma'am. Oh, maybe we should find a church on the way. That you, you got, you got the goods with them, right? You get us a nice. I don't know. Do churches do that? Um, yeah, they maybe. It depends on how big the church is. Um, they got those little slots like a like they do businesses have with the electric cars. Only it's for power. <laughs> no, <laughs> you could probably adapt something. Sisters of Battle only. Well, I don't know if you know where to find a church. By all means, lead the way. I don't know how to find a church. I don't live here. Oh, wait, it's, is Stumpy already gone? Yeah, he's gone. Good. Damn it. Should have asked him. Oh, Chase it. him down. Ah! Chase him down. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys can start looking. I mean, you can go in that direction. You're probably, just as a helpful suggestion, if you go in that direction, you'll probably find, because remember, this is the yeah. 41st millennium. Everything's run on the power of faith. So yep. you, you'll eventually run into a, a, a ecclesiarchical institution of some sort. I'm just going to go up to a person and ask. Oh, that's okay. more 
well kept, not like a ruffian. Okay, he's you go one of the basically one of the nicer stall users, the guys you've seen sort of work the stall. Um, and he's like, um, he's just looking at you, and he he's, he he looks you up and he's like, uh, hello, um, how can I help you? Where can I find the nearest chapel? Oh, uh, oh, very, very well. Um, yes, yes, you can find uh, the nearest um, congregation. Um, and he sort of gives you these directions. So you basically go down that hall, go up this elevator, about three three levels, then then head off, uh, like to the northeast purple corridor, and basically go right there, and you can't miss it. Not say anything for like two, three seconds, just trying to compute that information. Yeah, and then nod and walk off. Okay, let's go there. Yep. So you, uh, yeah, you definitely have directions, so you can totally get there. It's not too hard. Uh, is that what you're doing? Nodding. Yeah. Everyone nodding. Oh, definitely. Good, yeah. good, good, yeah. good. All right. So yeah, you head on out. Um, you go up this elevator, um, and yeah, you head up, you look over, um, you sort of get to see the wide spectrum of that cave that you, not cave, but that, that, uh, plaza, that open air, air plaza, you see down into it and you can see where sort of the skylight was being made. Um, you see the twinkle of the various like far distant lights, um, yeah, almost peaceful in a way, um. And sort of in the middle of quote unquote night here in this hive, and you head up into this corridor, and then you go off into the corridor, and you head off to the purple one. You go for a while. Um, you think you may have been lost, and just by the moment when you think you're lost or you went the wrong way, um, you see a um, built into another more uh, an open air that overlooks like the large has its own um, gantry. Um, that overlooks this large cavern, the one that looks down. Like, if you were to look over the side, you could see, in the distance, you could see where that open plaza top was. Um, You see this very large, etched into the side um, entry to an ecclesiarchical church. Um, It's got full full regalia. You actually see, and, and sort of flitting in and out, you see cherubs. Flitting in and out, um, speaking like these very short uh, vox prayers to the emperor, um, and the uh, but the doors are closed. This doesn't look like anyone's coming and going out at this time. So it's obviously like late or the off. Hour. It's like sleeping time. Um, so the doors are not open. Let's just bang on the door until they open it. Okay, uh-huh. sure. Yeah, you go up, bang, bang, bang. Um, you had to start banging a second time, and then shortly after the second ba- set of bangs, a uh, a shaven head woman uh, in robes uh, opens up. She has a full re- uh, uh, priestly um, m- uh, ministorum, uh, no, minist- yeah, ministorum uh, robes on uh, with a full rosary around, and she's like, "Hello, how can?" I-? And then she sort of. Takes him obviously a moment to recognize who she's looking at, and he's like, "Oh, oh, please come in, come in immediately!" And she just opens up the door without questioning. Yes, <laughs> I'd follow behind. Um, yeah, and you follow. Um, and you, Jacta, go in. Yes. Okay. Um, Jacta, would you please roll me res- resolve? Yes. Resolve. Yep. Uh, where's my resolve? Oh, that's not very good. Uh, no icons. No icons? Uh, but not a, not a critical failure? Nope. Okay. Yeah, you just feel uncomfortable. Like, it's like, maybe the fatigue is just getting to you. You're just, like, feeling, uh, starting to feel it. Um, but you guys enter, and it, you can smell the incense, you can see the, um, sort of these large tapestries on the side of the world, just like a, a very Baroque, uh, Catholic medieval cathedral, um, you see a large rose and see pews everywhere, and before you see the great altar that has this, um, shining sort of depiction of a, of a, uh, of a man's face, um, above that glows above a a golden throne, um, um, 
uh, I would speak the Latin, but I don't know it off the top of my head. I'll try to remember last name, but basically says, uh, he who uh, honored uh, glory to he who sits upon the golden throne, basically in that high Gothic language. Um, and she leads you down the way and then sort of stops and uh, then turns to, to Julieta and is like, Mistress, how can we help you? Um, what can the, the faithful servants of the Emperor do for you today? We have come looking for somewhere to rest for oh, so you a wish, couple of hours. You, you wish succor, then. We can we can give you that. That, that is not a problem. Um, they will be humble uh, provisions, but what we have is yours. And somewhere to charge my armor. Um, she, she looks for a second and thinks, and he's like, I will see if, uh, Brother Mayhew, um, it, I can rouse him and he may be able to assist you with that. Um, he knows a few of the eulogies of the machine spirits and may be able to coax their, um, connection. And uh, okay. she 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 leads you guys in basically into the back and just like a Catholic cathedral, if you go off to the side and behind the altar, there's a door and you go through the door and then it leads into a much more traditional sort of building with various rooms, bedrooms, offices, that kind of stuff. Um, this this is a fairly modest one. This isn't a very uh, by modern standards, it would be very large to to us. But to 40k Imperial Imperial Man, this is a very modest, small overall church um, with probably a staff of about 60, 60 to 100 people. Um, and you go down some corridors and you see little alcoves with shrines and like um, you guys even. Who's got a passive perception of four or better? So aid, passive perception. Passive yeah. perception, yeah. When you're not actively looking. Because you wouldn't be actively looking right now unless you mm, I have three. You have three? So only so aid, you notice this. You're more aware and especially being in this place fills you with a lot of comfort. Um there's it, it definitely has a lot of the same trappings that you're very useful because uh it seems that even in from world to world the uh ecclesiarchy can be a little different. Can have a, like a lot of different like icon iconography, a lot of different displays, but because you're from the Darus's marches, you're from this from this region, this subsector of space, and sort of the popularity of clemency of being sort of a hub. Um, this one seems to have be very similar to the ones that you remember from home. Um, so they all have the right images in the right spots. They say the right words. All in that 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 sort of high gothic and low gothic from time to time. Sort of just fills you with comfort, and you see one that you. Well, the reason you notice is because you. It's it's definitely different than anything you've seen. Um, in an alcove, there is a um, small statue, like a bronze statue, uh, of a man with uh, with his hands together, um, like like in prayer, with his head down. Um, he has a. He is both hides both sides of his head is shaven, and he's got basically this wafting mohawk that goes down, um, uh, a full uh, beard like mine, which is a very robust but thin, well trimmed beard, uh, full ecclesiastical robes, praying, and it looks like he's praying over a. Um, it's kind of interesting, like a little. When I say rook, I mean like a rook of a chess set. Like a large tower, like a small tower by his feet. He looks like he's praying over it, um, and very odd. Like you, you've never seen something like that before. So, I would stare at it for a while. Yep, or stare at it for a while. Um, and if the what's uh, the is it a serf or what? What is the? Oh no, it's a pre- priestess. Um, but she hasn't said her name. But when she shows, when she notices that you have physically stopped. And are just looking at this thing. She's like, oh, she just comes like, oh, is there something wrong? Is this a saint? Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is uh, Father Faithful. He would stare at it and remain silent for a while. Is there some issue? 
This is not what I imagined of Father, Father Faithful. Uh, well, he takes... This is one of his uh, younger depictions, or one of his when his, in his early days of the liberation of um, of clemency. Um, uh, do you not know some of the stories of Father Faithful? No. Well, one one of his stories, the one that this sort of harkens back to, um, is his time of, of vim and uh, what some would call vim and vigor when he was heart hale. Um, he was uh sort of the the story goes that there was a great tyranny of my clemency that the 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 will of the emperor had not been uh had been discarded in this place um and he rose up and he helped free the tear from us clemency the the hive that you under see now um from that tyranny and um and allowed the light of the uh, emperor the astronomicon to come back to the world and and his servants and faithful were rewarded um the uh the the, the small tower by his feet is a represent representation of clemency the Clement hive itself it is him watching uh over from from a celestial viewpoint he would nod and then turn back forward to face everybody else Shall we continue? If you wish, um, please. And she, if no one says anything, he bleeds. You guys continue on. Um, so he, he, a couple, couple, sort of uh, hallways down, and then, then sort of off to the side. Um, you definitely feel like you're in a closed space now, like you're in a building rather than that weird sort of like alleyway meets mountainside concept of the hive proper. Um, and he shows you to a small room that has a couple of uh, like uh, of cots, um, and uh, like a bowl for water, um, and very simple like sleeping robes, and very simple like place to put your head. Like so, this is bare bones, a place to sleep. As I said, these are very humble, but I'm sure that uh, they will be uh, enjoyed nonetheless. Ah, sweet. Perfect. He runs over and, like, jumps on one of the beds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you get a lot of dust gets kicked up, and she's like, well, I, I, that is a very good way. Uh, is there anything else you need? I will go see if Brother Mayhew is, um, if I can rouse him, and he will be to here to assist you with your more uh, technical needs. Just nod. <laughs> It's usually, yeah, oh, and if you ever need to speak with me, I'm I'm Sister Ashen. Um, oh, my Sister Ashen. Aid. Mm. Yep. Okay. And she sort of closes the door and leaves you guys to your own devices. Um. And uh, what are you guys doing while you're waiting? Uh. I mean, I'm assuming this place is rather. Uh, Bear, yeah, very bear. Um, Bruce is with you, by the way. Haha, <laughs> you, you didn't, you didn't leave him, leave him on his own because, he, like a toddler, you can't leave him alone. Um, I guess uh, I will get rest. Okay, sure. Yeah, everyone gets rested. Juliet, do you get out of your armor? Um, yeah. Okay. Just sort of do the do the ceremony of uh, dis of disrobing. Um, it feels good just because you can sort of breathe with all this incense. Even down here, uh, away from the main cathedral, you can smell the sort of very familiar um, incense uh, of faith uh, and all that. And so you come in, and then very shortly after you put your, like the robe on uh, to cover yourself, um, a a knock is had at the door. Um, and a, a a short, uh, surprisingly young gentleman, uh, with like half his face has been robotically, uh, cybernetically replaced, um, with like a big like red reticle, um, comes in. He's like, "Oh, hello, hello. Um, I'm I'm Brother Mayhew. I was told that someone needed my assistance." 
Um, yes, I'd like your help to charge my power armor. Oh, oh, wow. Um, you, you would ask this uh, venerable task of me? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, uh, I'm honored. I'm do be honored. Give give me a moment. I'll be, I will. Uh, it, hold hold on. And he like it looks like he wants to leave and do something. And then like, but he didn't realize. And he actually comes into the room and starts looking at the armor and going, "Oh, oh, I see, I see. I I I I think I understand. Good, good." And he sort of takes some mental notes and then like bolts out of the room. Uh, and then a few moments later, he comes. You you hear some weird noises, and then you hear he knocks again. Come in. And he just oh uh, uh, good good. And he sort of slides, kind of like he's not very obviously not very strong, but he's got a large cable like he's towing behind him. Um, and it's obviously getting in the way of the door. Like it, you wouldn't be able to close the door all the the way because of how big it is. Um, because this room is not geared towards any sort of like electrical like infrastructure and he sort of pulls out some tools and starts um speaks to the tools and then looks to the wire and then touches the armor and takes a quick prayer and he starts fiddling with it and opening a panel and making a, making a very ad hoc connection um after a few minutes of this work um he you see the power indicator light inside the armor loose under start to go, start filling up slowly um it's not the most optimal connection but it'll definitely work great thank you no i'm 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 the one who should be thanking you i have never been so blessed to uh experience uh the the merging of such a uh, holy regalia before um you, you have definitely inspired me and i appreciate your um your your kindness i'm glad this He's is all taking place in the <laughs> room with everybody yes yeah yeah there's no privacy here hey Hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, 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 altar boy. He, he sort of stops and realizes other people are in the room. Um, and then he's like, uh, I, I am not a boy, nor if, uh, do I, do I tend the altar, though I do m- minister to it. Uh, how, how can I help you? You got any spare data pads? Uh, spare? Yeah, and he and he pulls out the one he's got. And he's like, "I need parts." Um, maybe. Um, let me go look. And he 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 goes off. Um, um, and a few minutes later, he comes back and he's got. Uh, he's got. He definitely has one. Um, but this is definitely a very different maker than what you what you're used to. You could probably start working on it and put it back together and like ad hoc it, but it's going to require some time and effort. And you're tired. Okay. It's like, what, what, what you, it's like, get, give it here. Uh, he looks to Juliet, like, Menas, please. He, he sort of sighs. Please, altar boy. Oh, uh, my name is Brother Mayhew. Um, but here, here you go. <laughs> He takes it and he he starts like he basically start he'll fiddle with it as long as he can before he you know passes out. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. You start fiddling, but like in mid fiddle, you're like, mm. like literally, you fall asleep with some of the tools and jib- and basically mechanical bits on your chest as you just fall asleep. Um, yeah, everyone falls as- everyone falls asleep. Um, there is some very like. I will say just before people, most of you fall asleep, there's some very, very simple provision, like basically the equivalent of a little bit of stew and like a piece of like, like half a slice of bread is like given to you guys. Um, very simple food. And then um, you're left alone. Um, unfortunately, the door is open just because the large power cable had to be hauled in here. So... But you feel relatively safe, especially the uh, our imperial people feel relatively safe here, and you fall into a slumber. And um, 
uh, you sleep for a good long while. Um, thankfully, uh, there are in your voxes, you can set sort of a chronometer and set instead of setting a specific time, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, you set how many hours you want, to, want it before it goes off. It's strictly a timer and you can set it for like a certain number of hours. So about six to seven hours is probably what you've set yours. You guys is at, um, um, while you're asleep, Juliet, um, you have vivid dream. Um, you've had vivid dreams before. Like it is not uncommon. You you've talked to your sisters before about this. That those particular of the faith, those that are truly believe, and those that are um, blessed, have these vivid dreams before. So this is not going to be super uncommon for you. Um, but again, it's one of these yep. sort of these, they're not prophetic. So you're not used to having prophetic dreams. You're used to having just dreams of very vivid faith dreams of the faith. Um, sometimes they seem to be prophetic. Sometimes they're just, just your mind or your spirit speaking to you in certain ways. Um, but again, you see the, the, the sense of tainted community. Um, you see, um, the sun, sort of, uh, the the sun of the system, looking down upon clemency, and like the 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 walls crumble, and there's some other thing, some other uh, construct buried, or uh, something else is there, um, something within the walls itself. Um, you sense, uh, you get the sense, a deep sense of like despair, but it is also met with a deep sense of hope and, um, and, uh, and faith. Uh, um, that, that thing, no matter how dark the night, the dawn will bring the light sort of sensation. Um, and that's sort of when you wake up, um, and sort of come, you're not sweating, you're not, nothing like that, just that deep sense of faith and, and, and disturbance, and you definitely feel um, a resonance of that something lingers. And these types of dreams before have lingered with you for a while. Um, but it's not a dream that she would usually have? No, the imagery is very different. Okay. Um, you're used to more of like, traditional i guess quote unquote faithful dreams dreams of like the god emperor his holy angels the wrath of his, wrath and compassion of his servants um iconography occasionally you'll have dreams about like crusading against heresy and like like horrors like dealing like fighting against horrors but uh nothing like this and this would felt very cold some of these aspects felt very cold and just Distant. Yeah. And the rest of you guys sleep fine. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's not like the the softest or nicest bed, but it's definitely a good sleep. It's decent sleep. Um, it sort of starts re sort of readjusting yourself, and your chronometers go off. And speaking of chronometers, we're going to take our with that. We're going to take ourselves a ten minute break. Everyone, thank you very much for all uh, sticking with us through all the technical issues. Thank you, chat, for helping us out, figuring out that we had some technical other technical issues uh, that my microphone was too low. Um, but on that, we'll see you guys back in ten minutes. Inter Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. This is uh, where we have just left our intrepid adventurers. They are just took sucker and respite at an ecclesiarchal church within the uh, within the hive of clemency. Um, they are on their way to some nefarious rendezvous um, in a warehouse that is in the northern sort of outer edge of the hive, uh, hive itself. So. From there, we are opening up the map. Uh, Julietta just had a very intense dream. Not exactly sure what it all means, but has something to do with something, maybe. 
and you're awake. And by the time you get up, you've got about another day and a half um, power set into the um, armor. Oh. Okay. Uh, I would like to tell everybody about this strange dream that I had. Well, go ahead. Tell them. Okay. <laughs> um, so I had this dream last night and it felt very strange um, and like cold and like I was like felt like like community feeling but like not really like empty and I had like a deep sense of despair but I also had had a feeling of faith as well and it was very gross feeling you have these dreams often I have dreams often, but not like this. Mm. You sure you didn't get into what uh, what Bruce has? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> Maybe our holy lord is trying to send you a message. Or not or something. Maybe, but it just felt so bad. Maybe I would like to talk to Sister Ashen about it. You'd like us to accompany you? If you want to, but if you have other stuff to do, he'd look around. <laughs> How much time left do we have? Sure. The- uh, you got. Eight can accompany me. About, about 19, I would say about 19 hours. Jack is going to continue to try and repair this. Uh- mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thank the Emperor for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you've said something, oh, and Bruce is still asleep. He's just like whatever. Typical. I will be around, and I would just stand up and just walk around the chapel and look around at everything. Yeah, sure. Um, so you go, you go. Uh, Jack is going to uh, re- try to repair, continue repairing, adapting the data pad. Uh, Sister uh, Julietta is going to go find Sister Ashen. And uh, Aid is going to just mosey around. Okay, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Jacta. Go ahead and get me a tech use test as you try to basically hardwire some of this nearly incompatible technology together. Like, just the ports are different, the design is different. Um, uh, I'm going to spend a wrath on that. It did not go so well for you. No. I got uh, three icons and a critical failure for well, a complication. The complications definitely stays. Yep. But... Uh, so let's see. Get the reroll. Looks like nine. two of them. So let's get rid of those. And... and you do have one glory on the pot if you want to use it, but that's up to that's up to the group. Uh, for one additional, so that will bring me up to four icons. Yeah. Um, yes, you definitely, definitely start putting it together. Um, unfortunately, there is a critical setback. Um, one piece snaps, um, and it is a critical data sort of transfer, um, you can, with some other time and tools, you could probably put it back together, but this may have caused some conflict with the two machine spirits not communicating correctly to each other. So, 
Um, there is that. You... He, uh, he, uh, he sort of like puts all the, puts the data pad away and, uh, just sort of tosses the other one aside because he doesn't need it anymore and, uh, decides to see what kind of trouble he can get up to in the church. Well, um, for A, that took you several hours, by the way. Okay. That's, that's what's fine. frustrating about it is like, yep. um, so, Aid, you are wandering the halls, as it were. Um, and this is definitely a more active time. People see you, um, and even one of, uh, but thankfully, um, the uh, tech adept, uh, the tech priest, not a tech priest, not a mechanicus, but um, Mayhew sees you, and uh, just as you're being talked to by some other priest, he comes up and says, oh, he's with uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 sister, um, the Adeptus Rotus, um, uh, I believe his name is, and he sort of stops because he realizes he doesn't know your name. My name is Aid. Aid, and he is, if I know that mask anywhere, that is uh, the mask of Derusus, and therefore that makes you a Jenna, uh, Maccabi and Genesar, is that correct? It does. Oh, good, good. I knew I, I knew I had my uh, remembered. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh, okay," and they sort of go about their business. And it's like, "Oh, um, would you like to see anything particular?" No, just wandering around. Oh, feel free, feel free. I must um, scout out the area. Noble warriors, just as yourself, uh, are given free access here. Um, we have nothing to hide from you. Um, and you wander around. Um, Though he does, after a few minutes, you realize you're being followed by him because he keeps looking at your your hell shot uh, uh, pack. Shot. Yeah, hot shot pack. And he's like, um. Then he finally gets up there and is like, do you, I know you're just wandering around. Do you mind if I look at that? He would look down at what he is looking or pointing at. Is he pointing at it? Well, he's pointing at it and the backpack. Because remember, this thing is powered by a backpack. Um, mm. That's what gives it its its ferocity compared to a normal LAS gun. Um, besides the internal mechanisms being very different and being modified from a LAS gun, it's powered by a much larger uh, mm. yeah. amount of juice. He would stare at him for a few seconds, not responding, almost making it awkward. Yeah. Until he would take it off and then take his flamer to hand and continue walking around. Okay, he, he, uh, Aid, this is like Aid's byline, making it awkward. Um, Pretty much. Um, and he's like, and he, he doesn't believe you actually acquiesced to what he wanted, so he's like, and he just sits there, he just, he's like, I, I, I'll be in this room over here, and come find it, I just wanna, I won't, I won't break it, I won't do anything, I'm just gonna look at it and examine it. Um, he doesn't respond. He just walks away okay. with a flamethrower yeah. in hand now. Like, I will burn it. <laughs> I'll burn you alive if anything happens to it. Yeah, pretty right. much. <laughs> so, yeah, he goes off and starts, like, noodling with it. And you start looking around. Um, you see more of the cathedral itself. You go up into the pew. You go through the pews. You go up into the higher pews, the ones that are uh, just, like, a, a level or two above. This one's modest. He can hold a couple thousand people. Um, it, you, you actually, uh, when you're walk out one point, you do see a short service is being performed by, for a couple hundred people, um, that have come in off the streets or whatnot. And the, some of the priests are conducting a, a sort of a, you, uh, uh, yeah, a eulogy of, of, of fallen brethren and sort of the, the tiding of the time that, and he speaks of the, of the time of prayer and parade, um, that the faith should be, should be, um, uh, should be re- uh, should be enjoyed and 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 should be demonstrated. It's a time of action. Uh, it's a time of 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 getting yourself uh, over to the faith. Um, this has a very passionate um, ink uh, sort of reaction from the crowd. Um, one particular gentleman seems like, yeah, yeah, we should, we should do something. It's and he's getting very excited to the point that he's actually starting to disrupt the the ceremony. Um, um, yeah. I would probably walk up to him yeah. and place my arm or my hand on his shoulder. 
Uh, okay, you do. Um, he looks to you and he's like, what, who? And he sees that you're a big man in carapace armor with a very shiny silver mask on. And uh, roll intimidation for me. Do, do, do. All right, cool. That's an odd roll. Yeah, that is a very odd one. And you got, you got, you got a decent you amount. Got three. But yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah you did, did three. Um, I'll give you guys a glory. Um, yeah, you sort of look at this man. It's like, and he, he he's <laughs> looks like he's about to like shrug you off and like get in your face, but then you're just your steel gate, your your nearly eyeless mask sort of gets into him, and he's like, uh, and he just quiets down and 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 just sits back down if you let him. Yeah, I just nod to him okay. and back off. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the sermon goes off uh, uh but at that small altercation, the sermon moves away from sort of this high fiery rhetoric and sort of goes back to understanding, but it's also a time of understanding our faith and understanding our fellow brothers and sisters um, and to honor the Father Faithful and the God Emperor and all they have given to our glorious uh, hive um, and that we should be our glorious city and that we should be thankful for what we have and what we can give to them in service. That kind of stuff. And just getting rolls off. Um, that happens. That takes a while, and you probably enjoy the service yourself. You, you're, it's yeah, it's, of course. Uh, it's a little different. It's a little different than you're used to, but you you have a much more regimented like these things happen at this time in this way type of thing. This seems to be a little more loosey goosey, um, the more civilian as it were. <clears throat> yeah, okay. and then Juliet. Um, so you go find uh, Priestess Ashton. Um, and you do. Um, she is in observance, and she's actually tending to some robes, like not her own, but other. Like she has a small stack of robes, and that's obviously something she's actively doing. And she's going through and um, sewing up holes and and trimming them. She's obviously doing some tailoring. Um, uh, it's just, oh, and she stands up immediately when she sees you. And are you in your armor or out of your armor? Out of my armor. Okay. Wow. Okay. Sure. Yeah. She definitely stands up and, and looks up and she slightly averts her gaze and it's like, Yes, sister, how may I help you? Okay. Um I wanted to talk to you about this dream that I had last night. You had a dream? Um of course, of course of course. Please shut the door. Um and, 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 Okay. And she she motions to there's another chair next to the table that she's working at with uh, uh, these piles of robes, and it's like, um, please tell me I, I'm if you wish proper confession, I can I can handle that as well. Um, but uh, if you just really wish to talk to me about what you're thinking and feeling, I, I'm, I'm sure I could help one way or another. Uh, just talk, no confession needed. <laughs> oh, good, understood. Um, so, um, I had this dream last night where, like, it kind of felt like, like, I was on drugs, maybe, and, like, it was dark, and, like, I had, like, a community feel, but it was, like, hollow and cold, and, like, there was a deep sense of despair. Hmm. I'm well, very sorry to hear that. Um, I have not had, I mean, I've had nightmares, but I've not had anything spe so specific before. Um, not that I can remember, at least. So I cannot tell you um, what spirit was calling out to me, what, what, what the emperor was trying to tell me. Um, I can... She stops and thinks for a moment um, to consider your words. And like, I'm not sure what help I can give you in your understanding. Um, do you believe these? This is a 
a vision, a true, a true message, or is this something more internal? Well, it felt very real. Hmm. Hmm. And I know that the people have been quite disturbed lately, and there's been a lot of rioting in the streets. Mm-hmm. And that's very true. Um, it has been troubling. Uh, I've been here for many years. Um, I grew up here. Um, I, I know all of many of the parts of this uh, hive, uh, and I've I've seen some of the worst of it and some of the best of it. Um, and this is definitely one of the darker times. Um, people have seemed to have very little regard for law or the or the church. Um, I, I fear they even potentially border on heresy, but the masses still come to, to all our services. They, in some respects, they seem to be more people here than usual, but I don't know. Their, uh, f- their fervor is greater than ever I've seen, um, which I guess I, I would hate to say is not a blessing, but it is. But it's, yeah, I don't know, it's directed in the wrong way. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Um, I could not tell you more than that. Um, I do feel that guidance is needed. Um, a guiding hand is needed in these trying times. Um, and maybe you are here because you need to be here. Um, the emperor works through us all. Um, and maybe he works through you. Specifically. Um. Um, And do you know anything about this new drug that has been around lately called Midnight? I have heard of those who have um, confided in me. Um, They, it is... I don't know what it is. I don't know what it does, uh, but I do know it's around. Um, new concoctions from the Underhive are not uncommon, um, but like uh, uh, like a fire, they tend to burn themselves pretty out pretty quickly, and then it's on to something else. Um, though, granted, with the more of the desperate times. Um, I would guess that uh, people are trying to cling to whatever safety they feel or some sort of sanctuary. And uh, faith, unfortunately, is not doing that for them. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Um, Hopefully I've given you some clarity, but again, I'm not um, uh, uh, studied in the ways of prophecy or or seer i'm not a seer i have not been blessed with such um but it makes sense in my mind my faith that one such as yourself would would be blessed with such um you are uh adeptus sororitus after all you have you are one of the um the great children of the emperor and his faith Yes, well, it was it was good to talk and get it off my chest anyway. Hmm. So, uh, is there anything else you want to talk to her about? Mm, no. I would just like to say thank you to mm. her no. for mm. letting us. You're stay. quite welcome. Um, I'm I am honored that you would confide any of this with me. I'm merely an acolyte. I merely do my due diligence. Um uh you should if you're really if you're really bothered by these visions, um and if you believe they're truly visions, um you would need to speak to the one of the high priests in the uh hold on one second, I need to look something up. Boop. Because as Matthew looks up his notes, because Matthew's dumb. Can't. 
Okay. Yep. Um, you need to speak to one of the high priests. Um, um, there is the main cathedral upon clemency. It's well within the heart of the upper hive and the uh, um, the spire proper. Um, the uh, the lower uh, lower spire, what we call the vault. Um, it's where many of the nobles stay. It's called the uh, his glory upon the high throne. All uh, we we call it for short. We call it high hall. Um, um, if you speak to one of the high priests there, and and I would see no reason why they would not will, gladly speak to one such as yourself. They may be more um, astute in interpreting vision. Um, uh, that's all I can do. Um, um, it will take some time to get there from here, obviously. This place is very far away from up there. She sort of looks upwards like it's supposed to be there. Um, and she's like, it's, um, they have much more, much more resources at the disposal than us. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Of course, of course. If there's nothing else, I need to get back to my sewing. And these these robes right, will not fix themselves, awesome. sadly. Okay, and then I'd like to go back to my armor okay. and then find my friends. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, you guys kind of all reconvene. Um, Jack, Day, you've been like still kind of slightly fuming about busting that one piece. Um, you're like, I, you almost had it. You were this close. You're not square one, but you definitely need like one little critical piece and you can put it together. And that will probably give you a lot more information about what's going on or something. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So the, uh, hold on a second. Uh, oh, come on. Sorry, I'm fixing something in the overlay. It's being dumb. There's Mac. Okay. Oh, okay, got it. Eh. Well. All right. Yep. There we go. Um, yep. So you guys reconvene. Um, you. What are you guys going to do now? You said it's nineteen hours till the round. Uh, about the by the time you guys are done, you got about about another fifteen. And it's going to take you a couple hours, several hours to get there. Should probably go get my hot shot back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see Aid without his hot shot uh, uh one moment as I get get it back. It's gone forever. Yeah, you um um uh you you knock on that door and 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 you, you very quickly the door opens in almost a, a, a jerking motion and uh uh, Mayhew is there. He's like, what? Oh, ha, hi, yes, I lost track of the time. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, yes, here it is, here it is. Thank you very much. Um, I have even gone, I have not altered any, but I have administered blessings to it uh, to make sure the uh, machine spirit uh, uh, is appeased and that the, uh, and that the, uh, has been, uh, been anointed um, with, with holy oils of, uh, our, of the church so that it may, uh, do righteous work for you and yours. Very well. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. He uh, would take it and walk away. So the uh, out of play. Uh, the next time you roll one uh, with, uh, you can ignore a complication uh, once. The next time you roll one, essentially. Cool. Thank you very much. Yep. Just make a note of that. 
So you guys gather up, and uh, if you head out, you head out. Just let me know. You all done with your little respite? Who do you say that to? All of you. Okay. Yes, I'm quite quite well rested. And I suggest we start heading out to this uh, little meetup. Let me suggest so, yes. Okay, so you guys head out. Um, you guys make your way. Um, it takes you. Um, go ahead and roll. Someone roll me a cunning or survival. Uh, people can assist if they wish. To whoever's going to be the main. Did we lose Shannon? Shannon. Oh, she kind of froze, didn't she? Boo. Yep. Shannon. Hold on. Let me check Discord real quick. Apologize, everyone. When you mess with when you use technology, you have technical problems. Yeah, she's not on Discord, so she may her internet may have completely crapped out on her. Um, let's give her just a few minutes, everyone. I'm gonna go do a little bit of a break. I apologize. Just uh, hopefully we'll clear the air in a few minutes. And we're back. I'm going to have to do some serious video editing on this one. Yeah, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, when you use the internet, the internet uses you. Um, so we had to wait for uh, Shannon to get back, so we we're happy that she's back. We didn't have to end early. So let's drop right back into what we were doing. Uh, so, oh, God, don't do that. Let's not do that. Never mind. That ended very poorly. Matthew... There you go. All right. So you all headed out of the cathedral. Um, you're making your way to this uh, warehouse. How many, how many icons did you get on that trying to find the place? Uh, I got a total of four. Um, yeah, that, although I don't know if if uh, Abe or Juliet were going to assist. Anybody want to assist? He used cunning, so you have to use cunning to do to help him. All right, we'll do. Yeah. You two are good at cunning, right? Supposedly, maybe. I'm better at survival, but cunning can still technically work. I have three in cunning. But you can always roll it to help him if you want. That's up to you. They've got two. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll help. Okay. So, oh, Juliet got two. Cool. So, yep. Two and two. So you go get, you met, that's one six. Uh, that's weird. That means you get two. Because, unfortunately, you have to... You have to move a six to, uh, um, you have to shift a six uh, in order to get more than one. So, uh-huh. so two, how many yeah, dice two do I get? Two dice. Uh, no. No? Okay. Yep. So you run on that four. But four is thankfully more than enough to, to find this place within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, there's not there's not a huge there's not a lag. You basically head up. You're actually going kind of have to go up and over. Um, the safest and easiest route is up and over, which is over the power plant, the power plant sort of zone, um, because you guys don't have direct access to that, um, and you have to go back down towards the the past the water purification center um, and sort of go in that that by layer. Again, um, between the uh, <clears throat> yeah, between the uh, uh, underhive and the hive proper, um, it takes you a couple several hours to get there. 
Um, you have to go through crowds of people. You have to just general. Luckily, most people give white birth to you guys. They don't want to. They don't want to mess with you. So, uh, you make it. Um, okay, I would like everyone to make me a awareness chests, please. Damn. Get five. You know what? I'm going to use my wrath for this. Okay, sure. (coughs) Can if you wish. Shannon over here rocking. Oh, yeah, man. But she got a complication. She got a complication. I mean, (laughs) she sees whatever's coming. I got eight. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Um, you probably succeed. So, uh, what I'm going to say is, um, would you guys, those who rolled really high, or uh, the difficulty was actually only um, three. So, if anyone wants to move six over to glory, let me know. Uh, glory doesn't stay till next session, right? No, it does not. Uh, yeah, I'll move over a six to glory. Okay. Can you I go. move over one? What? Oh, you want to move Can over? Can I move one? Okay, sure. So you guys currently have four in the bot. All right. Um. So you guys definitely know you're being tailed. Um, how many did you get, Jacta? Two. Two? Yeah, so Aid and Julieta definitely know you guys are being followed. Somebody's following you. Um, you may spend more sixes to get more information if you want. Yeah. Okay. How many How many you want to shift over? But you still got to meet the difficulty of four, so f- do the math on that one. And we only have four. Yeah, but remember, you already moved. That's why I asked if you wanted to move a six over. So a six has already been removed out of that four. So you may not have enough to get more information. I can only spend one six okay. to so find you, out more. Yeah, okay. You spend one six to find out more. What about Juliet? No. No, okay. So Aid, uh, yeah, so Aid and Juliet definitely share a glance at each other like, did you like did you see that and and aid sort of looks around and you see a um young woman um with a conspicuous sort of uh she she's trying very she's doing a very good job of like keeping herself from um being right behind you guys, but she's definitely like on you and you, you specifically see who it is. Uh, Joey, you don't know who specifically, you just get this weird feeling you're being watched. And then you okay. kind of get this idea that there, there, there's a presence behind you somewhere. Um, Can I guess who it is? What? I guess who it is. Sure. Lucinda. Um, doesn't look like her. Damn it. Nope. Doesn't look like her. No, uh, so you guys have that information. What do you want to do about it? If you want to do anything at all about it, we are currently being followed. <laughs> is this uh, is this area like particularly dark? Like, uh, I mean, it's the hive, so it's it's decently lit. It, this this part, yeah. you're not through. A, you're all of us. You the reason she started noticing. You guys started noticing because you're not in. You're in a must densely populated area. There's not a lot of traffic through this part because you're starting to go past the water purification. So where the main factories uh-huh. and stuff are, and you're starting to head down to where there's more of just basic storage and other sort of large warehouse areas. Unless you two have a plan, I will confront them. Yeah, I think we should confront them. So 
So we can only see one person. Yeah, one's, I mean, one's, Jack just kind of looks around to see who it is, but he, um, you he can't, can't you can't make it out. Like, after a moment, you do. Um, uh, you, Aid is able to point them out to both of you um, who it is. Was it anybody I recognize? Mm-mm. Okay. Was it? All right, turning around now. Okay, you turn around and you sort of head straight for her. Yep. Um, she stops and looks and definitely looks like has that deer in headlights crap look. Um, and she bolts. Um, so oh, I'm gonna chase her. Okay, uh, make an athletics test, please. You have a slightly uh, for this. You have a slightly higher plus one penalty because uh, they. Um, you're in bulky carapace armor, whereas they are lithe little street urchin type person. So, sure. Um, I will. You. You just cut out. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> it says I can discard the card to gain one wrath and draw a new card. Sure, absolutely, you can do that. I'll do that. I don't know how to. Just just click on it and move it onto the plane. Move it onto the map area and then delete it. And then I'll give you a new card. Push to talk. Sorry, the push to talk doesn't work when I click on other things. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't. You have to be on that. Apologize. Yep. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna spend that wrath immediately. Yeah, sure. To re-roll my thing. Okay, and I just gave you a new card. Hello, I. Th- it's the flame of heart. Okay, I know this one. <laughs> Finds love in a street urchin. Good. Um, so, yep. Just tell me how many successes you get. In a little bit, Manu. Can I use another wrath? No. That's not how that works. Understood. So, only one time. Yep. And but now you can choose if you want to use glory or not. That use it. Uh, you use the reroll first, and then you decide if you want to use glory. I mean, Would you guys mind if I? I mean, one. you've got it right now. I was going to say, you know, you've got four, five. You've got five on the base roll, then you just got another two. Yep. So you're up to seven. Yep. Yeah, you. Oh, you, uh, you know what? I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> I rolled two. I got two. I didn't even realize if you rolled. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I get two. You you absolutely just run her over with that. You basically, she goes to run and you just stride a few times and you reach out your hand and just yunk them back. Um, and she's like squirming and trying to say, let me go, let me go. He can he's move when he really says. wants to. Surprisingly enough, actually. Resisting will cause more pain. Uh, she, she stops. Very good. Wait for the rest of the people to come. Okay. <laughs> Juliet would like to jog towards him. Okay, yeah. This happened so fast. Like, he turned around, she turned a bolt, he strode, and then he's only, a, like, he's maybe no more than 10 meters away from you guys. And then, boom, got her. Like, without without really feel, looking like you tried. Um, Did you find yourself a girlfriend? Very funny. I thought it was. <laughs> my my blankless eyes <laughs> just burrow holes through fucking ceramite right now. Uh, <laughs> he she she's here. So you guys are up there. You guys can freely do what you want. Start speaking. Hi. I rifle through her pockets. Um, she's got a couple thrones on her. She doesn't have much. It's not like she's got like a, she's not like a courier or anything weird like that. So yeah. What were you gonna do? Steal her power armor? No. Um, I was I was asked to you know keep tabs to you guys. Ooh 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 who? Uh. Doesn't seem like she wants to say. 
Unless you want your knees blown off, I suggest you speak. Mm. Uh, what was the names? Uh, what was the name I gave you? I think it was so. That was Celeste. It was. You're talking about the the the, the, the gang leader. Yeah, the gang leader, the one with uh, the Celite. Celite. Sell it, Celite. Celite. We'll just go with Celite. Celite did. She wanted to know what you guys are up to. Um, oh, she decided to finally take me up on my offer. I have no idea what that's about. She just said, look for this chrome dude, look for this woman, um, and look for this woman in power armor. I don't think she she knows about... Fair enough, whatever. Now, how does she know about her? And he points to... She, to she, uh, she, 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 just because she's been scuffed, she's like, I have no idea. Don't no, not, I do not have that answer. And what she want to know? Keep tabs. Just, see where you go. Just, who you talk to. I only recently picked up your your scent, as it were. Obviously, I'm not very good at my job. <laughs> so what, when were you gonna when were you gonna meet her? You got a you got a box no, on? You? She told me follow you guys for a day or two. Collect some. Figure out what you good. I got a good memory for things. That's why she likes using me. You're That's supposed it. to meet her up later. I contact her. How do you contact her? Uh, I go down and talk to some people, and then they eventually go, hey, meet her there. It's not like I have a direct Vox to her or anything. Come on. Okay, buddy. I don't, I don't care anymore. You do what you want with her. For spreading the good word of the Emperor, and I would shove her back. And she she goes up and she's like, and she gives you kind of a rude gesture, and then she's fucking <laughs> jumps. Um, yeah, she's gone. She, she likes she, you. She, she just uh, she's she's like in her mid teens. Like this was this what, so she and the small child, <laughs> right? The small child. Um, Kids these days, no respect. Don't know what's Get off my head. lawn. Oh, All right. So you guys, the street, the the this the woman that you don't know anything about, just bart darted and she's gone. She's back in the crowd. Um, you guys head off. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So eventually, uh, within like another hour, you guys get to this warehouse. Um, it's it's built um, sort of uh, unlike what we would understand a warehouse. This is a very big building. Um, this is built into the side of the hive proper. So you kind of have to go into it and then you have to go like gangways and, and a few others to sort of get the full lay of the land. Um, um, however, when you get there, there is security. There is people guarding the main, some of the entrances. So you don't know if there's a secret way in or like a back way or less secure way in. This is just what you see right now. Um, so, this place isn't abandoned. It does not look like it's dilapidated. It looks like this is an active, actively used warehouse. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Jack to darts off to go find his own way through things. What is uh, what is Aid and uh, um, Julieta doing? Looking for prying eyes. Okay, more prying eyes. Yeah, give me your awareness test. What's that, Eddie? I got five. Yep. Yes, you did. You did roll very well. Um, there is. Here's the problem that you're starting to understand about your situation. Covert missions are really hard with somebody like Juliet around. It's just when she walks around, and my cat's in a box. Sorry, my cat just jumped in a box. Um, it's really hard to sort of have not people look at you. Um, so there are definitely people looking. There's a couple guards that have taken notice of her. Um, but there's no one beyond the obvious that seems to be looking at her, at you guys. Uh, 
Okay. Like there's not somebody in a corner, like an alleyway or in a window or something like that. No. Okay. I would start now like realizing that I would yeah. start now paying attention to people that are like, not that people are like, Oh my God, what is that? Power armor or like big thing. Paying attention to the quiet people that are like squint in their eyes, you know, plotting. Yeah, it's it's that's harder to hit out, obviously. And there's but there's nothing nothing like that going on, not like the not like the tale that you had earlier. Okay, then I would just continue to look out. Yep. Okay, and the Mac attack is back. Ooh, that actually worked. <laughs> um, what I miss? Uh, no. You just aid looking around, looking at stuff. I heard something about guards. Yeah, there are there are our, our so, power armor. So yeah, she is. That's that's something Aid is realizing is when Juliet's <laughs> around, and even him to a slightly lesser extent. When people are around like them, it's very. Hold on, cat. <sighs> Cat's being. He always ripped a well picture off the wall. Being riled up, people people know about her that haven't even met her yet. Yeah, well, it's the idea of it's she's very noticeable, and people mm-hmm. take notice of her actively or actively looking at her when they see her because because it's so odd. Um, in a different situation, maybe a less of less of an issue, but it's more of an issue here. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead, and you guys can figure out what you want to do. Um, you can try to smooth talk your way past the guards. You could try to sneak your way in. You can do a whole bunch of other stuff. How many guards are there? Um, there's the main, like two or three, out in the uh, on that. There's obviously, and down the uh, down the road a little ways. There's a couple more. There's probably more inside. Um, and these look like. These don't. These aren't like suppressors or PDF or anything like that. These are local, hired, probably by the noble house that that runs the warehouse. Oh, so they don't even look like gangers. They look no. like official. These like, these are <laughs> official guys. These are official. Okay. Uh, is there any other way into the warehouse? That like, is there an obvious way? In, like, obviously, there's like the main door of the warehouse. Are yeah. there? Like side doors. That's or... that. That's good. That's an investigation check. That's uh-huh. you're gonna have to go actively looking for other ways in and out of this place, and you may have to like leave this level and go to another level. Then go up like through uh, various crawl spaces or entry other like uh, sort of side um, alleyways to get to this thing. Just because hives are, you have to think in three dimensions. You can't, it's not just, oh, the ground and the the warehouse. It's above the warehouse, beside the warehouse, behind the warehouse, under the warehouse, the whole thing. You uh, you, you might want to consider a change of attire, man. We can distract them and you can sneak in there. Oh, we can do that too. Yeah. Don't have to change anything. Luckily, <laughs> Ejecta, you're aware that Luckily, the armor that they wear doesn't really impede their ability to sneak. It's just when they're out and about doing normal things, it's very noticeable just because big dudes in armor. Well, uh, I'm going to go see if there's other ways in. And he's going to go start looking around. Like He's going to, like, walk the perimeter and, like, look for, you know, other ways of entry. Okay, sure. Um, give me an investigation check. Uh, three, four. Good job. Mm, yeah, you are able to find. Um, you have to actually go down sort of a couple alleyways. Then you basically make your way into another, um, obviously not actively used building, and you're able to like your knowledge of like hive architecture and like how these things typically are laid out. You find that there is a, um, there is an old sort of causeway through this one era warehouse to another warehouse that leads to a door that is, you're like damn sure that this leads into that warehouse. However, that will, that door seems to be welded shut. Um, so you have a, clear way of getting in but you'd have to 
figure out a way to get through that door. Throw Bruce at it. What kind of door is it? Uh, this is like a solid, like steel, um, um, sort of steel alloy door. It's not. It's not ceramite. It's not plasteel. It's not like superhumanly tough. This is. This is more normal, mundane materials. If you had the right cutting tools, or if you were surprisingly strong, uh, you may be able to do something. Uh. Uh. Do, 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 do. Hold on, I'm looking for something. Hmm? Can I MacGyver this? Well, you're not there. You, oh, never mind. You, you, so you asked him to. You asked him to go off. He went off by himself. I assumed right, right. that because you're like, "Hey, go off and do the thing," because we're very noticeable. He went off and did the thing. Um, I have a combi tool, but I'm assuming that doesn't come with like a cutting hey, implement. It, it can be. I will say it will. It it will allow you the attempt, but it's not going to give you any bonuses. Okay. Um, but. You got to remember, cutting through this type of thing may not be. It depends on you. Don't know what's on the other side. Uh-huh. Guards could be on the other side, or nothing could be on the other side. You don't know. Um. So he will activate his uh, box mm-hmm. sure. and just. Uh, well, actually, let me let me get up to the door first. I want to try and go up to it just so I can examine oh, yeah. it you, easily. Okay. There's no one here. There's no one here. No. Um, can I like listen? Like put my uh, ear that up will to be it an aware. Hear. That will be an active awareness test, please. Have you tried knocking on the door? <laughs> hey, that's, that's too obvious. Handy, Graham. <laughs> uh, okay, that's uh, six seven. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. You you listen you listen for a good long while you actually sort of um, you, you also can I shift one of those for more information Yes you can absolutely I, I, Like you... I said generally when somebody rolls really well I give them a little more okay. meat. I it, it's a little tedious in my mind just to be like oh what do you shift don't shift I, occasionally I'll do that like I did with the um, the the, oh, I the got tail. two sixes that's yeah. why I asked Yeah you totally can um, you actually adjust the frequencies of your Cybernetic ears to like resonate. I don't have any cybernetic ears. You have cybernetic ears. <laughs> I have cyber. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You get up the door. You listen. You do a few like light knockings just to get a sense of how dense this is, and you realize it's not that dense. Um, and you listen. You wait. You wait like a good twenty minutes. You're just listening, getting a feel, and you're like, okay. You occasionally hear footsteps but they're not right next to that door even when they walk by okay. so it's it's either in another like this leads into like some other room or okay. wherever the people are normally walking it's not very close to to this okay. um, and you don't hear any other weird noises like a bathroom or anything like that so yeah he will uh he'll activate his box and he'll just say uh i found a door but it's gonna take me some time to get it open Would you like us to come down there? I mean, if you think you can do it quiet, like. <laughs> I think people would notice. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should go down there. But, like, would we have to, like, sneak down there? No, he didn't. Or just walk? Yeah, he didn't have to sneak actively sneak, so you guys can just get there. Yeah, let's just go there. Okay. Yeah, after after about five minutes, they, they show up. Like, you, you tell them, um, because I'm actually seeing that their voxes are built into their helmets. Uh, um, whereas yours is like an actual, like, well, sort of a more of a strapped on walkie talkie headphone headset sort of situation where it's it's looped into your ear. I got the hand me down. Yeah. Well, no, you just got one because you don't wear a helmet. 
Um, and that's not very uncommon for people with full mm-hmm. carapace and he- power armor to actually yep. like get a headset fox. Um, so, yeah, he you you meet him and it's a small, short gangway um, connecting this sort of this uh, older warehouse to that warehouse, and this one's obviously not being used. Um, there's detritus and crap on the door, but it's been picked clean, so there's not much here. Um, that's where you are. So uh, he's going to pop out his combi tool, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever it, it, it encompasses. I don't know if crowbar or something on it, whatever. Uh, and he's going to uh, start trying to open this door. Sure. That will be a tech use test, please. Um, but you're not going to get any bonuses from the combi tool uh, that you normally would get. Technically, I don't even think it normally gives you a bonus. I think um, generally most tools and stuff give you like a plus one. Yeah, this one just says that it has a tool for almost any job. Yeah, it generally it means that you get a plus one. Okay. But, but. Uh, and I'm going to spend my last wrath to okay. re-roll that. Sure. I was going to ask if I can assist, but I think it's too late. No, no. It, it, this is very one-person job just because okay. the space and sort of the – and he's the only one really with a tool. Um, if you had another sort of tool – uh, you could probably may be able to help, but it's also a space issue. I have a MacGyver tool. A MacGyver tool? <laughs> so the 1d6 is the rat die. Uh, so I got a 6 on the first one, which is 2, it's a 3, or 5, and then the rat die gives me a 6. Yep. All right. Yeah, you, after about, two, about 15 minutes of work, um, you actually start with like uh, the hinges were unfortunately are on the other side, so you actually have to do the brute force thing of cutting through the actual solder and weld points, um, and then you sort of have to make a few weak points here and there, and you work on the lock because it was actually the lock has been like few like locked and then then melt melted into spot, so you had to kind of cut that out. And then after a little while, it does make some noise, the act of cutting part, but luckily you're, you're good enough that um, it, 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 it sort of comes off its hinge. Like you're able to cut and with AIDS help a little bit and, and you're able to pick up and sort of move the whole plating of the door off silently. Yeah. It didn't fall like immediately down or anything like that. And yeah. you, it opens up to a, um, a small, uh, looks like, unused uh, like storage room like a small storage room that has like old crap in there things that they've long forgotten about um Ooh. now the thing about the 40k universe there's just crap everywhere because people just forget about things and they what kind of just, things are in here uh, just random parts of like like screws nuts toasters bolts, toasters some some things that were toaster like Nothing that you need. Yeah, there might be a data pad in here. You don't hey, know. I'm looking for that damn data pad. <laughs> um, yeah, and you guys are here. Um, what are you guys doing? There is a door. There's a there's a more traditional door. It's not locked. It is not uh, secured in any way. It's just a door um, that yeah, that sort of uh, leads out into the warehouse proper. Um, you don't know what's on the other side. You don't have much of a layout. Um, you actually don't know. You have a general, very vague sense of how big the warehouse is, but it could have like pieces of architecture that just like are very illogical, and so just like eh, warehouse, and then it has a huge bottom or something like that that just goes on for like a mile. Who knows? Uh-huh. Uh, I'll move up to the door. I'm gonna uh, listen. Okay, uh, another awareness test, please. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, three, four, five, six with a critical success. Yeah. Um. You. Yeah. You listen, and there's it. It seems to be clear sailing. Um. Uh, and you. Um. You actually hear something. You actually hear it in your little room because there's a little Vox sort of speaker. Um. Shortly after he's st- after about a minute of listening, he's like, "Shift change. Please shut down all." Uh, resident uh, uh, all ah. shift change please shut down all equipment 
begin your uh, you may you know, repeats shift change. Please shut down all equipment. Shift will begin in two hours. Sweet. So you have about two hours of clear sailing, which if you look at your clock, that's about the time that this, in within that two hours, that exchange will happen. I open the door and pop my head out. You, you'll ground, um, yeah, down the hallway, there's somebody walking away from you, um, but they quickly turn, um, um, and they walk out, and uh, yeah, that's what you see. There's so you basically have very quickly you have a couple gangplanks and this is more more like a traditional modern day warehouse, um, which big open area, lots of gangplanks and walkways above, um, and big machinery moving um, uh, crates and large pieces of equipment around this warehouse. Um, a couple offices that overlook the warehouse itself. You see a couple people moving down uh, past uh, on the main floor, moving stuff around and sort of like putting equipment back away so that they're, they're stored properly. And yeah, you get see people leaving. He sort of turns back and he's like, well, what are you waiting for? You open the door. You go first. Well, he already opened the door. You had to open the door to look out. So, fine. Uh, so, I mean, I'll I'll uh, go down the hall. Okay, sure. You're sneaking around, or are you just gonna be like, do do do? I got this. No, I'm definitely sneaking around. Okay, make a stealth check for me. Won't be too hard because you're uh, you're at a good spot. Uh, four. Yeah, you're good. You're fine. Uh, yeah, you make your way out, and it's definitely if you give it another ten minutes, most people are out the door. Um, even some of the overseers are gone. They're they're not here. Um, suspiciously so. And that's as you guys move your way. So I'll say that sort of rides for both uh, Julieta and for Aid. You guys make your way to sort of an office area that overlooks down over the warehouse. And you're like, um, Jacta and to a lesser extent, Aid is aware that like there should be more people here, even in like a large shift change like this. So it definitely feels suspicious. Um, and uh, I would like to know because we are going to reappear up very shortly. What would you like to do before this meeting? You have about mm, you got some time. I won't tell you exactly how much. Mm. What kind of factory is this? It's not a factory. It's a warehouse. So it just oh, stores kind of, things. Okay, so it's just storage. It stores yeah. a whole wide range of things. Probably mostly mesh. Mostly like rolls of mesh, uh, maybe some of the tailor, like mass produced tailored uh, pieces of clothing that are made of mesh, maybe some of uh, some refined uh, ceracrite okay. that just odds and ends things that just come and go for trading. He didn't give us any specifics about where specifically it was taking place, just yeah. that it was in the warehouse. It's a large warehouse, but it, 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 you know that there's a number of people that are going to be here, so it probably wouldn't be super hard to find them. Okay. And if this is uh, 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 as large a drop off as uh, Jaren was explaining, um, they definitely need some some minor equipment to move some of this stuff around. So pinpointing them probably won't be hard. Okay. Um, I mean, I suppose the first thing would just be to find where it would likely take place. That way, we could get an idea of what we're dealing with. Yeah, the only issue is you won't know that until they show up. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what you're looking for. That's another kicker. If you knew what you were exactly what you were looking for, you could if it's if it's here, assuming they're not bringing it with them. Mm-hmm. I would like to look for some good places to hide. Sure. Uh, make a hmm, make a awareness check. Two, you get 
three. Yeah, you get three total. Yeah, you find a couple good ones. I'm going to give, um, because this is going to happen more for the next game, I'm going to make a note of it. I'm going to give you guys a plus two um, dice. Uh, basically, I'm going, to, I'm going to start you off with, uh, yeah, I'll just do that. I'll, uh, yeah, plus two bonus to, for the scene when you, if you're actively hiding um, to, to find out uh, like wherever this meetup is. If you need a place to hide, you'll get a plus two die bonus to dealing with that. Um, okay. And uh, if anyone else is doing anything else, anything that I need to be aware of. I'll find a place in the ramparts sure. above everybody. Sure. In good, good perch, good upper perch yeah. to cover, so I can just cover them. Down if yeah. I need to. Yeah. So you do that, you sort of get in position and everyone sort of like wait, then gets in a good solid area and waits. Um, yeah. And shortly thereafter, um, within about 30 minutes, a, a, a large group of people come through and you, you all sort of like stay still and hopefully, and you notice that they look distinctly different than any of the workers. They have wild haircuts. They have tattoos. They've got piercings. They've got cybernetics. These are definitely people like Jacta. These are gangers. These are people rough and tumble, ready to go. Um, and they start moving some boxes around, and they start looking around, and they seem to have some way of ident- IDing certain boxes, and they start pulling them and pull pulling things out of these specific boxes and stacking them up. And then um, within about 10 minutes after that, they're doing that, another uh, one of the gangers leaves, and then comes back with another about six guys, um, these guys are, are f- finer dressed. They are, um, they do not seem to have a lot of piercing or tattooing. They're not gangers. They don't appear to be hardcore gangers like they were. Um, and, um, you notice that one of them is with him is much larger. He's wearing full, uh, carapace armor somewhere to not somewhere in somewhat designed to aids, but not like a, another, not a not another Janissar type armor, just full carapace, um, and and a, and a, he, they also have a, a heavy with them. Um, uh, this guy looks like he uh, uh, is probably a servitor um, because he's got large one one large like mechanical sort of piston operated like um, jaws of life like left arm. So they're definitely. If something goes down, they're definitely ready to rumble on either side. They all have weaponry, um, and that's where I'm going to leave it, where the meeting begins. And hopefully we'll have Fats back so he can play Bruce and everyone can be involved. Perfect. So, Good stuff. Cool, cool. You ever have fun? I know Absolutely. It was, yes. I know it was a little less action-packed and a little more low-key sort of building <laughs> up the drama. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. So, Good. Uh, as a note to our audience, if anyone's listening to this, if it matters, um, next week we'll have no game. There will be no game because I have I have a date with uh, uh, with the end game. For three hours, I'll be sitting in my butt at 7 o'clock to watch uh, a spectacular movie that I have no doubt will bust all the records. So, no game next week. We appreciate We love you guys, but I got I got to watch a movie. So, but in two weeks, we'll be back. Two weeks. Two weeks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.